Hello guys! Welcome back again to my channel. I'm Ken from Travel the World with Tor Ken. If you are new from my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and click the notification bell so that you will be notified if I uploaded a new video. I will assure you the only school world heritage borders of the Roman Empire Upper German Russian lines, or UNESCO built Erba, Grinza des Romanischen Reiches over Germanisch Reistische lines. Enjoy watching Ken from Travel the World with Torque. Welcome to Romer Castle, Salbur. In the early 3rd century, the situation along the lines became increasingly unsettled. A preventive war under Caracalla, who marched against the Alamanni and their chatty allies from Batian and Mungun Yakum. Lowered the Germanic pressure on the border only temporary, the town of Nida, the capital of the regional Civitas, was given a defensive enclosure around that time. Already around 233, the Alemanni entered Roman territory again. Further major incursions took place in 254 and 260. Eventually, all the areas east of the Rhine were lost during the major political and economic crisis of the mid-3rd century. In the course of this event, the Salbord fort appears to have been abandoned deliberately and without military actions. After the abandonment of the upper Germanic lines, the port was used as a quarry. The Salbord, it is final architectural piece, is the form of a constructed today as a cohort for typical for this part of the lines, a 147 by 221 meter rectangle with the four gates. The religion and traffic, the exhibition presents testimonies of the various Roman religious, cultures such as the altars with votive inscriptions and the leaves with a representation of gods, original remains of the timber bridge over the river main, the stockstadt, and the parts of the wagons demonstrate the advanced traffic system in the Roman time. Throwing spears and thrusting spears, these were among the most customary weapons in the Roman army. Their iron heads are therefore also the most common weapons found in the Limnitz fort. The pilum was a typical Roman throwing weapon. It was characterized by a long, then iron, shank ending, and a small head. The shank buckled the impact of to prevent reuse by enemies. Other spears had a lip-shaped heads which could cause severe flesh wounds and the square sections for a legal head to perinate enemy's armor.
The Roman shoes from the Salzburg Party in Stein. The simplest shoes is the one made from a single piece of a leather lock together. A style it was common throughout the ancient Europe, no special skill would be required for its productions. Other examples of the shoemaker crafts are the amate leather summer sandals and the sleepers like house sandals, which is only few pieces were found. Wooden shoes were cheaper and much easier to make. The cloth fragments were, like the leather remains, preserved in the deep well below the groundwater level. Excavations also uncovered spindle, wars, and boom waves. The woman of the Salbord civilian settlement produced some of the textile. Although the Salborg is known mainly as an archaeological park and museum, it also serves a number of scientific functions less obvious to the visitor. The most striking features for the modern visitors are the fully reconstructed walls and gates, the Principia with the eight, shrine, and the signa militaria or the standards, the assembled hall, and also the two barracks buildings with the rebuilt interior and the partially reconstruction praetorium. Only about 200 meters north of the Porta, the line runs by its west earthly direction. Part of the border defense has been reconstructed here. As long most of the extent in the Taunus area, the lines near the Salbord is remarkably well preserved and can be easily followed through the landscape. Ditch and banks are distinctly visible for a long stretches, and many of the former watchtower had been partially preserved or are visible of the small mount. Thus, the Salbord is a good starting point for the further explorations of the lines. And then, of course, there is a limes that remains in the Taunus constitute some of the best preserved traces of the upper German Russian limes, which is the largest ground monument in Europe. Since the reconstructions, the Salbordas functions also as an international renowned center of research concerned with the provincial Roman archaeology in general, the limes in particular. The heart of the center is a specialized library of 30,000 volumes and 2,200 slides and the Salbord Museum regularly organizes the colloquia and has its own series of academic publications. The Horium contains an informative exhibition focusing on the cultural, historical, architectural, and military aspect of the Roman German. The museum exhibits a large collection of well-preserved military and domestic equipment from the Salbord and the other sites in the area as well as the series of architectural and theorems models. Tours around the fortress, which was rebuilt around 1900 at the request of the Emperor Wilhelm II. Through the museum with the archaeological finds, stage rooms and models, and a past of the foundation walls of the village that was once located outside the fortifications, and numerous programs and special events provide insights into the world of the Romans that will fascinate both young and old. Cultural explorations around the Salbord can be combined with a relaxing enjoyment of nature. The Rundvig Salbord is 2.4 kilometers long and takes about 45 minutes to walk, passing archaeological monuments and reconstructions with six boards providing information in German, English, and French. An excursion back into the Asian world, just 2 kilometers from Bad Homburg on one of the town slopes. An excursion that is unmatched anywhere else. The only Roman fortress in the world to have been rebuilt and situated on the slope alongside the B456, hiding towards Usingi. The Salbu 
together with the limes, the Roman boundary wall, it becomes an UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Site in 2005. The village began immediately outside the main gate, where the ruins of the mansion, an official hostel, and behind it, a bath for the soldiers were found. These are the followed along the road by the preserved basement and the foundations partially reconstructed of a residential houses and of, as a belief in the time of the excavations, a mithrium, a shrine to the mithras, and deeply popular among the Roman army. Archaeologists assume that the overall complex, fort, and the vicus house a population of up to 2,500 soldiers and 1,500 civilians. I'm Ken from Travel the World with Dorkin. Thank you for your love and support to my channel. I really appreciate it. Just leave your comment about what did you saw or any feedbacks that will help in my channel to improve in the future. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and click the notification bell so that you will be notified if I uploaded a new video. Stay safe and take care.